question. Do each and every one of these such likes include the threefold truth? Answer. They do include the threefold truth. Question. What do you mean by include? Answer. The term such of all the ten such likes refers to the meaning of emptiness. The conventional constructions, which are all different, such as appearance, nature, and so forth, refer to the meaning of conventional existence. The term like of all the ten such likes refers to the meaning of the middle. Question. If the text is read on this basis, what does it mean? Answer. There are three turnings of the phrase. The first is to emphasize suchness or emptiness by reading it as the appearances are such, the nature is such, the retributions are such. The second is to emphasize the conventional aspects by reading it as the appearances are so-and-so, the nature is so-and-so, and the retributions are so-and-so. The third is to emphasize the aspect of the middle by reading it as such like are the appearances, such like is the nature, and such like are the retributions. Question. Why is this threefold distinction made? Answer. Such distinctions are made in order to facilitate understanding. If one understands and tries to verbalize this, it is expressed as emptiness is identical to conventional existence and the middle, conventional existence is identical to the middle and emptiness, and the middle is identical to emptiness and conventional existence. Question. What is the meaning of emptiness is identical to conventional existence and the middle, and so forth? Answer. If emptiness is clarified with reference to suchness, then the emptiness of one is the emptiness of all. If appearances and so forth are clarified with regard to suchness, then the conventional existence of one is the conventional existence of all. If the middle is discussed in terms of likeness, then the middleness of one is the middleness of all. Question. Is this threefold truth of emptiness, conventional existence, and the middle of being simultaneously empty and conventionally existent included in one thought, or included in many different thoughts? Answer. It is included in one thought. Question. What do you mean when you say that it is included in one thought? Answer. One thought in the mind truly has no substantial mark. This is called emptiness. But there is no dharma that it does not encompass. This is called conventional existence. It is neither one nor differentiated. This is called the middle. Therefore, it is known that each and every thought is such like. All contain the threefold truth. Each aspect of the threefold truth is present in one thought. Question. Does the mind of one thought merely contain the threefold truth and the ten suchnesses? Answer. It also contains the trichilocosm of one hundred realms and a thousand suchnesses. Question. What is the trichilocosm of one hundred realms and a thousand suchnesses? Answer. One Dharma realm contains ten such likes. So the ten Dharma realms contain one hundred such likes. Also, each Dharma realm contains the other nine Dharma realms. So there are one hundred Dharma realms and one thousand such likes. Also, one Dharma realm contains three kinds of worlds. So the one hundred Dharma realms contain three thousand worlds, a trichilocosm. Question. Why do you establish a trichilocosm of one hundred realms and a thousand suchnesses? Answer. If we do not organize phenomena in terms of the one hundred realms, it would not be complete. The thousand suchnesses could not be verbalized, and causality would be excluded. Without the trichilocosm, the world and we who live in it would not be exhaustively explained. Question. Is this doctrine of the ten such likes the direct teaching of the Dharma as it truly is, or is it just a teaching by analogy? Answer. This is a direct teaching of the Dharma, not just an analogy. 
Question. What if it were taught by analogy? Answer. There is the text in the chapter of Parables in the Lotus Sutra concerning the great white bull cart. Question. What if the ten such likes, as both the direct teaching of Dharma and as analogy, are harmonized? Answer. That which is called such like appearance in the text, which is the direct teaching of the Dharma, is explained as adorned with a multitude of jewels in the analogy. The Dharma of such like nature is analogously explained as there was a great white bull cart. The Dharma of such like essence is analogously explained as that cart was high and vast. The Dharma of such like power is analogously explained as also on its top are spread out parasols and canopies. The Dharma of such like activity is analogously explained as swift as the wind. The Dharma of such like causes is analogously explained as mounting the jeweled cart they played in all four directions. The Dharma of such like conditions is analogously explained as there are also many attendants serving and guarding it. The Dharma of such like results is analogously explained as leading directly to the seat of enlightenment. Question. What is utilized to harmonize the direct teaching of the Dharma and the teaching as an analogy with regard to these ten such likes? Answer. The texts that explain the Dharma directly refer to the fruit of Buddhahood as the true aspect of reality. The analogous explanation refers to the grandly adorned great cart as that which leads directly to the seat of enlightenment. The section concerning past lives, the first half of the Lotus Sutra, teaches the ultimate fruit of Buddhahood as the exposition of the tentative and the manifestation of the real. The section on the original basis of the Buddha, the second half of the Lotus Sutra, teaches that the eternally enlightened Buddha corresponds to the subtle Dharma. How can it be referred to as merely a harmonization of the direct teaching of the Dharma and teaching through analogy? This meaning is common to all from the stories of past lives to the explanation of original Buddhahood in the last half of the Lotus Sutra.